Well, I am back at Chilhowie and uh, I'm heading down to Benton Falls. Today is a little different trip for me uh, because I am not taking 30 pounds of gear. <laughs> um, I am taking a sling bag with just a minimal amount of equipment in it and my EOSR strapped to the front. Um, because I am going to try to use the platypod as my tripod. I, I have two or three photo walks planned to take the platypod with me to see what I can do and what I can't do in order to determine if I actually want to take a tripod with me when I go to Rome in March or if I just want to take the platypod with me and use it to get the pictures I can get. So I'm going to take off down the trail and uh, this trail is always interesting for me because I am always on the lookout for bears. I've never seen one, <clears throat> but I have run across a rattlesnake. Uh, and so I have my boots on just to protect my ankles just in case. Um, and we'll see how the walk goes. I'll see when we get there or maybe along the way. We'll figure it out. And we've made it to the top of the falls. It's about a 35 minute walk. This is the nice thing about Benton Falls is that the trail is really, really easy. Um, and especially now we've had a lot of rain, but the trail has had enough time to dry out. The rocks are, are dry so that they're not slippery at all. You don't need a walking stick to get here. And there's a pretty good set of steps down to the bottom of the falls. You'll be about 25 minutes into the walk before you start to hear any water. So don't be afraid. Uh, you'll eventually get there. Let's go down to the bottom. I can do this without falling in. So the nice thing about the platypod is that <clears throat> it comes with these little feet that allow you to set it on rocks and things. You can take the feet off, put it on a flat surface if you need to. Um, but I'm gonna take a few shots here. Now, the one thing that I didn't do for my 15 to 35 is I didn't bring the adapter to hold my filters. I have that for the 24 to 105, which I'll use in a little bit. So we'll see what we can get here um, with this. If I can get down here and my knees work for me. So let's turn this baby on. And I can tell immediately that I really need the filter because at the top of the falls, it's really, really bright. Um, but we'll see what we get here. See if I can get this sort of level. All right, so I have this set up uh, with a halfway decent um, composition with two large rocks on both sides. I've set my uh, aperture to f16 uh, in an effort to slow that shutter speed down just a little bit. So right now 
I have two and a half seconds. And let's fire off a couple of shots here. I'm on a two second timer. Two and a half seconds. That slows the water down really, really nice. But not so much that I lose the streaks. Now, if I were to go 10 or 15 seconds, it would just be a mass of white. I'm not really interested in that. But because I'm down so low with the platypod, I get a really nice look out here at the base of the water. Uh, it will be better when I put the other lens on and I have an opportunity to use my circular polarizer because I don't have one to fit this lens. Um, but we'll take a few more shots and see what we're doing. The object today is not really to get great compositions and great pictures of the falls, although it's hard to take a bad picture of Benton Falls. The object really is to see how the platypod works, where I can set it up easily, where it doesn't work, uh, and we'll see if we can get a few shots along the way that let us know that as well. So I put the uh, 24 to 105 lens on and obviously I can't get the same kind of picture that I got before. Um, because I'm only going to 24 millimeter and not 15. And I'm also having a little trouble with my Canon M50. It only wants to record two or three minutes. But I have put the circular polarizer on to sort of let me see the rocks in the water. And I've also put on a graduated neutral density filter to cut the light at the top. And so we're gonna keep it at, uh, we're gonna go to F11, uh, and that's going to give me about eight seconds. That's way too long, um, but the neutral density filter is uh, bringing the light down quite a bit. Um, however, I like that. So we're going to leave that. Take a couple of more shots here. Yep, that'll work out really, really nicely. I'm gonna try one more thing with the platypod before I get gone. So let's see what that does. So one of the other things the platypod will do, other than sitting on all kinds of other things, is with this red cable, I'll show it to you in a minute in focus, I can actually hang this from various areas. So if I'm somewhere that's got a post or a tree, now I'll show you another tree over here. It won't reach around this, but it has a long Velcro uh, adhesive on it that allows me to put it exactly where I want it. Let me show you. So you can see this tree is angled pretty good if I come up here. It's not straight up and down like that tree, but that tree is really thick. This tree, uh, you know, it's got a diameter maybe of about eight inches. So I have the platypod strapped to the tree, and then with the ball head, I can level up the shot that I want and still take whatever images I want to take. So now again, this is a lousy composition. Don't, don't judge me on the composition. I just want to show you what the platypod will do if you don't want to carry a large tripod with you, um, or like I have done, carry two tripods with you. Okay, so I'm back from the falls and uh, about ready to go home, hoping this doesn't, if I move this over to this side, if I can. And it won't be hitting my chin every time I'm trying to turn to talk. Um, so here's what I did. Um, I have this little bag, it's a low pro bag. I bought this just to get around for a little while. It's not the bag I plan to take with me. Um, 
but this is the Platypod Max. Um, and it, it's just a flat piece of metal. It is flat, that's Plata, and it is a flat foot pod, Platypod. Um, what it does is, let's see if I can find my, I used my, um, there it is, I used my cheap travel tripod head rather than my more expensive one. Worked just fine, but there is a little screw here in the middle that your tripod head screws onto. And then you can attach your camera. And I have the Peak Design clamp on here um, so that it will clamp to the Peak Design uh, holder on my strap, uh, which you saw hanging from me. So what I typically use Let's get this down here. What I typically use, whoops. Let's try that again. Yeah, it has to go this way. Um, and we'll get it on there. Okay, so what that allows you to do is hold your camera if you need to take long exposure shots or if you need to just really hold the camera still it gives you an opportunity to do that now i use an l bracket because you never know when you're going to need to put the camera vertical or horizontal so i typically put the l bracket on there before i use the platypod all right let's try this again because you never know when the battery is going to go out on your canon m50 but in addition it has these little feet on it that just screw in, uh, there's four holes here. They screw in to be able to maneuver this over rocks any way you need to. Uh, in addition, it has the little uh, rubberized end here that really just, just fits over. So you can put them either way. You can put them to dig into something or if, it's, if what you have is soft and scratchable like a tabletop, then you can always use the rubberized feet. There is, uh, on the Pro, or on the Max rather, there is a holder for these built in, uh, and there's a little bit of a magnet right at the end um, that hits that tip to keep it in and keeps it from sliding out. There's also the, K the, uh, the Velcro uh, strap that you saw me using. Um, this would not have gone around the bigger tree, but you can buy an extra one of these and loop them together to make a longer strap and get it around something that's pretty thick. Um, now, will this replace a tripod? No, uh, it will not replace a tripod. Will it replace a tripod most of the time? I think yes. Um, so uh, I think that I'm, I'm gonna try this out in a couple of other ways over the weekend. There'll be an, another video later uh, to see how to use this. Now, this is the Platypod Max. I also have the Platypod Ultra, which is about this big compared to the Max. I'll show it to you in the, in the next video. Um, and to just carry around and use your camera with it attached, it's really lightweight and easy and doesn't really bother you at all um, to just have the camera always on the Platypod ready to sit down anywhere you want to sit it. You don't have to carry this in a separate bag. Uh, I did today because I needed this strap to my strap. The other thing that I'm trying out today, um, I have a new collapsible water bottle. Um, and it works really, really well. Let me just get rid of all the water in it real quick. Um, this will just collapse right down on itself 
when you put the lid on, it, it pretty much stays collapsed, but it also has um, these built-in, if my fingers will get them, these built-in straps that will hold it in place. Yeah. Come here, you. Well, they're wet now, so it's hard to deal with. Um, anyway, you get the idea. It will uh, collapse down really small and throw into a carry-on bag and allow me to fill that up anywhere I am. Again, I got that basically for my trip to Rome, but it, it worked out really nice today because I do have a water bottle carrier, a low-pro water bottle carrier that straps to my belt so I can carry a water bottle with me anywhere. Um, and that's it. Yeah, the Platypod Max was about $120, I think. Um, it has a lot of really, really good uses. Um, and I think that it's going to be what I need for my trip overseas. I think that I can get away with uh, not having a regular tripod traveling around the city. Now, if I were going to go shoot a waterfall for real, I would, I might take this with me, but I would also take uh, a tripod because you never know when you want to set that tripod up out in the water to get what you want. This won't do that. All right, we'll see you next time.